Hello and welcome to this watercolour video. It's the second one and this is also an exercise. It's a fairly simple exercise in painting a watercolour wave. And the effect, the desired effect, is those waves where you see the light, the sunlight catching the wave and you get that wonderful glow from a wave just as it's breaking and the sunlight is, is passing through the wave. It's not a very dramatic picture this, as I said, it is only an exercise, but it is useful because I think it teaches you some useful technique in terms of masking, lifting out, and blending, and of course, in watercolour, wet on wet. Don't worry if you don't get it exactly right. But this is an exercise and of course you can have a few goals at it. You don't have to just do it once. I'm drawing it out. Fairly simple shape. The light isn't very good at this point in the video. It does get better, I promise. Um, so I'll have a little pause at the start and you can see where I put the masking fluid on and you can see the drawing a little bit more clearly on that but it's basically the wave with the foam and the foam actually has a little bit of foreshortening and perspective on it so you can go back to that first part of the uh, video as I said and you can freeze that if you need to copy that these shapes you don't have to copy these shapes exactly of course but just try and follow the idea that the waves, those shapes at the top of the foam are more elongated and the ones at the base are more foreshortened. So they have a more compressed appearance. This is a 1B pencil I'm using for that, for this job. and I don't lean too heavily. This is a guideline and we're going to be putting masking fluid on top of these marks. I'm using the masking fluid and I'm going to add a little bit of water to the masking fluid to dilute it. There are some masking fluid applicators available and you can buy them and they have a fine needle on them and they would be very useful for this job but I think I'll manage with the with a brush and a little bit of a diluted masking fluid, it shouldn't be too bad. Notice that in this drawing the horizon line is quite high. The main focal point of this picture is of course the wave there's a little section at the top and that's going to be the sky and what I'm going to do there is put some clouds in there later and that'll be done very simply with a very simple basic wash. So what I'm doing now is just applying this masking fluid using a number three brush. And I didn't put very much water in there, just a little bit, and I stirred it first. And hopefully you can see the pattern on the wave, the foam, a little bit better in this section of the video. It's the lights improved a little bit. In this exercise, we're keeping the wave fairly straightforward. There are some 
great variations of this uh, way that you can do, and this would be useful later on. What I'm doing is keeping, as I said, very simple for this one. Uh, but you can use the same technique and perhaps bring a little bit more drama into the, the, uh, to the scene. If you go and take some photographs of the sea and some waves on your own, uh, that would be great to get your own reference on this and use some of your own observation on the wave. You might see other things besides this, like different colours. It'll depend on the, the weather on the day. If the sky is grey, of course, that impacts on the colour of the sea. If there's a blue sky, you'll obviously get that reflected in the sea. Or if there's a sunset, those colours will also be reflected. So doing a little bit of research on this is a great help as well on your own. And of course, quick sketches. The sea is one of those difficult subjects because it's always on the move. So you, you are confronted with that um, mass of information in front of you and the, the key there is to just distill that into some basic elements that you can then use in your painting and of course we're so lucky these days with uh, the amazing uh, photographic abilities on mobile phones and great cameras so you can very easily capture great detail on the waves and then use that in your painting and then we have the added bonus, you can also do a little bit of artistic license. The masking fluid has got a bit thick here, and that doesn't matter, I'll just try and spread that out. And masking fluid is very useful, it does keep that paper white and fresh and lovely and crisp. And uh, when we're finished and it dries, we can apply the washes on top of that. What this exercise hopefully teaches you as well is the wonderful transparency of watercolour and how you can use that effect uh, quite dramatically in this instance with the wave with a kind of a high tonal range. There's some nice darks in the wave and there's some nice lights and there's a nice element of contrast in that. Yes, yeah, so you can let the masking fluid dry. Try not to leave it on too long. If you're like me and you're impatient, a hairdryer is great. Just be careful you don't go too close. And of course, tape down the tape down the paper before you do that. So now what I'm adding now is the colour gamboge is what I have on my little paint set. You can use cadmium yellow if you like that works just as well and this is viridian going on and allowing the viridian to run in wet and wet so the the yellow is wet still and I'm allowing that to deliberately feed in to the to the yellow wash now underneath the foam at the top of the wave here there is a little bit of a shadow um, for that shadow, I've simply mixed alizarin crimson and viridian to get a lovely rich grey. I've probably gone slightly towards the viridian side rather than the crimson side. And this is a little bit more yellow I'm putting on. So darken the viridian a little more, add some more, a little bit of the grey mix, not too much. Now it's dried overnight. The masking fluid is dried. I'm taking off the masking fluid with a rubber. Just hold the page flat with one hand and rub vigorously. Use a rubber, I use a nice clean rubber for this. and The masking fluid should peel off fairly easily.
don't leave the masking fluid on too long because uh, there is a risk of tearing the paper. Using a round brush number 10, an all rounder. Using the Viridian and Alizarin Crimson mix for that sort of grey colour. I put that in the centre here or just at the base of the wave to darken that area and I'm deliberately going over the even the white mast areas as well. I've, I've got a droplet there and just spread that out. There's no issue with that. You can just lift that out with a piece of tissue if that happens and it happens me a lot. So I don't want a hard edge on this. So using the brush add a little bit of water and we simply diffuse that using the wet and wet direct on the edge. Just water and at the base so that we don't have a hard edge. We want that to be a soft edge. And I can now add a little more of the dark just to drop it in that's uh, still wet and with watercolour you have to be adventurous. I'm just putting in a wash of yellow at the top area of the wave here. Nice and strong. You could this is gamboja in fact, but you could use cadmium yellow. little bit on the base as well just to warm that up a little. Notice that already my dark section is already a little bit lighter than it first appeared. As a rule, it's better to paint in watercolour the light areas first. I have a blot on my sky. So I need to get rid of that. I just use tissue very quickly. A little bit of a wet tissue and erase that as quickly as you can if that happens. That will completely be gone. There's no need to worry when that happens. And that's quite a dark colour as well. It's completely gone by simply using a, a wet tissue. Let's just darken that area a little more. I want some nice strong contrast in there. So that again is my mix of Viridian and Alizarin Crimson. In my mixture, the Viridian is slightly dominant, so it has a slightly darker green appearance. And of course, those two colours are basically complementary colours mixed together. A very useful mix if you mix greens and reds or orange and blue you will get a neutral colour. Those colours tend to cancel each other out. It's worth having an experiment with those and have a test page and make a little note of the colours that you see.
So underneath the foam, at the top of the wave, a little bit more of that dark. That's the alizarin and viridian mix. Lightened down a little bit, a little bit of water in there. And I don't want really a hard edge on that. I should soften that a little bit as well. I think a little bit in the distant wave as well. A little bit of shadow. I've used a lot of wet and wet in this painting and because I'm working into the wet again there's always a little risk of backgrounds. Now sometimes backgrounds are a nuisance. There are pictures where you wouldn't really want them so you would avoid you would be careful where you apply those techniques. For this exercise I actually quite like backgrounds. I think they add another little dimension to the waves and the sea. And you can see there is one at the bottom right hand corner in this painting. There is a little area there that is a background clearly. And I'm just leave that in. What happens there is the, the area is already wet and paint. You, you're putting more paint in there while it's still wet. It's a kind of extreme wet and wet I would like to call it. Leave the painting to dry and once it's dry you can do this little exercise here which is basically put masking tape on the horizon. You can measure those off and mark them off with a ruler to make sure you get it even. I've decided I think it might be nice to just tie that edge up a little bit uh, and have a little, little bit more accurate. I was slightly off on the right hand side and this should fix that. But primarily what this is for is for the cloud section, which is a wonderfully easy and it's a great fun technique to do. Uh, you could do this nearly on its own uh, as a little practice for clouds, if you like. So I'm using a three inch brush, use a nice wide brush. Get a big area on your palette or your plate uh, of color. This color is cerulean blue, plenty of water and plenty of pigment in there. Really mix it up well and very simply just apply on this top section. I want to get a good coverage, so I've done a couple of strokes. Um, if you can go in one go without hesitating as I've just done, just cover it in one stroke, if you like, as many as it takes. And now take a tissue and roll the tissue. You can roll it like this to get a slightly more random effect and then use a little bit of dabbing, gently dabbing, while the colour is still nice and wet, you get a lovely cloudy effect just like that. So easy and yet so effective. And adds a nice dimension to the, the picture. So I let that dry. And now I carefully remove the masking tape. And we've got quite a nice horizon line. I quite like the sharpness of that, although initially I thought I might have that slightly soft edged. I think I leave it in. That's not bad. It needs a it's a little stark, so it needs a little colour in there as well, a little bit of uh, detail. 
I'm using a fine brush for the detail now. That's ultramarine blue. And there's a nice point on this brush and just some random strokes to put in some of the waves in the distance. I'm holding the camera by hand here so it's a little bit shaky. Please bear with me. I wanted you to see close up those little marks. You could use, as I said, a number one brush or a rigger will do this. This brand is an, actually a number three but it has a very good point on it. And you can see there there's some just those little fine strokes just for the distance. You don't want to be too busy with those and because I paint a lot of wildlife I sometimes think I go a little over the top with some of these areas but I enjoy doing it and it's uh, it's another little technique that is useful uh, when you're painting the sea just to put some ripples and waves in and you don't have to cover the whole thing in these. Be a little bit selective and as you're further out to sea probably fewer are required. So that's ultramarine blue and lots of little fine strokes. Some strokes in the foreground as well, slightly longer, and this is ultramarine blue for those areas. I should also say that for the cloud area, if you want to, when the painting is completely dry, you can add a little hint of raw sienna, very, very pale, and keep away from the edges, but just put that into those cloud areas and it will warm the clouds up a little bit. Another possibility that I mentioned in the list is the use of white gouache, and you can put that on the white areas and add some extra white to the foam maybe extend that area a little I realize that some people struggle with this little technique and if you're a beginner I you have my sympathy it is quite repetitive and if you're not used with a fine brush it can be a little frustrating the best thing to do is get a scrap page and just practice doodling these marks, do horizontal marks and do vertical ones until you get the feel of it and are able to achieve a fine line. It may take time, but if you keep practicing it, it will come in time. I really learned this technique from my wildlife painting because of course when you're painting birds and animals, uh, the fur and so on, you require these fine strokes. You don't have to become overly dependent on them either. If you uh, find it frustrating as well, there is no reason why you, your style could simply be to keep those elements at a minimum or even leave them out. And I know some people who struggle with this actually find using a larger brush with a point a little bit easier. Those marks I'm putting on now look quite heavy and they will dry a little bit lighter and if they don't uh, I would be quite willing to do a little bit of amending later on which is to say 
get the tissue again and simply dab out. Try and soften those marks if need be. So even though watercolour has this reputation of being a little unforgiving, there are some tricks you can use if need be. Some larger strokes just at the edge here, at the right hand edge. I'm doing them quite rapidly, I don't want to be too fussy with them. It's a nice choppy sea, so perhaps the random they are the better. I think we'll leave it there and let's have a look. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this little demonstration. I should point out that I did actually put in the end the raw sienna in the cloud and you can see that little hint in the finished painting. So until the next time, have some fun with your wet and wet techniques.